What's up, nutrition nerds? We're in a bit of a weird place at the moment with coronavirus, but I know some of you are racing soon. So I thought it'd be a great idea to give you some information on what to eat before a race so that you can get the most out of it. And you can use this for any distance race because the principle is the same. This isn't just exclusive to triathlon either. So if you've got a half marathon, marathon, bike or swim race, it'll work for that too. So let's go. As you know, I'm a man of science and my aim is to explain it properly for you and make it relatable so that you can use it independently in the future. So before we get into the what to eat, let's quickly cover the why it's important to eat before a race. I'm gonna be talking about glycogen, glucose and fructose in this video. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say that, go and watch my carbohydrate video and then come back. For those of you who already have, gold star. As you'll hopefully remember from that video, carbohydrates are stored in our bodies as glycogen and we use those stores throughout the day to generate energy for ourselves whether that's just sitting at a desk or actively training we store glycogen in our liver and muscles and our body converts the glycogen to glucose as it's something that our cells use to generate energy now the normal process is this eat replenish your stores use up some of your stores eat repeat so we keep our stores topped up throughout the day by eating regularly but we also use up some of our stores when we sleep i know it might not feel like much happens when we're snoozing but we're just as awesome when we're sleeping so we've still got to supply our body with energy only this time we don't eat and replenish our stores unless you sleepwalk and eat if that's the case this video isn't quite as useful for you but we'll go with most of you don't do that so when the morning comes and we wake up, we've used up some of our precious glycogen stores. This is important because it's those stores that we need and use when we exercise. As I mentioned in the carbohydrate video, when we work harder, we use more carbohydrates. And that's just simple fact. Before we race, we want to make sure our glycogen stores are as full as possible to help give our body all of the energy it needs to work to its potential and reduce the chance of running out of carbohydrates, which you might know as bonking. You know that sucky feeling when you're completely drained and you don't wanna carry on? Yeah, that. We don't wanna do that. When we eat before a race, we're helping to top up those glycogen stores, and that's the real function of it. But the other side of why, which a lot of people won't realize, is that when we're in a fed state, we perform better at harder exercise. Research has shown that when we're in a fasted state, our perception of exercise is harder. But when we've had food before, we're more up for it and feel better during hard exercise. So to make sure you're as geared up as possible before the race, you should eat before it. You're much more likely to go to nasty town if you do. Might sound obvious, and I'm sure you're there thinking, of course I'd eat before a race. But hopefully now you understand what is happening inside your body when you do. Now we know the why of why to eat before a race, let's get into the what to eat. Because our aim is just to top up our stores and feel good, aiming for an average portion size is fine. So we don't want to shovel food in and end up feeling super full because that won't go down well, literally. I would also encourage a couple of things. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, go with something that you enjoy. Especially if it's an early morning, it can be quite tough to eat at that time. And if you enjoy it, you're so much more likely to actually eat. And if you have any foods that are part of your routine or habit, and you feel like you race better when you have them, then that's an important part of your race prep and I would encourage it. Secondly, aim for a meal which focuses around a carbohydrate source like oats, bread, pasta or rice. And if you can, get some fruit in there too. This covers off both the glucose and fructose elements of carbohydrates, so will improve your chances of topping up your glycogen stores. The current guidance is to have a meal which contains one gram per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrates. So for a 70 kilogram athlete, this would be at least 70 grams of carbs. My favorite go-to is overnight oats. I put some oats, pumpkin, sunflower and chia seeds, a banana, some frozen cherries, blueberries, and then some oat milk into a container, give it a good old shake and put it in the fridge. I do all of this the night before so that it's ready to go in the morning. But if you really push for time or struggle with that early start, just put it next to your bed with a spoon and you're good to go as soon as you wake up. 
and it is delicious. So what more could you want? I'll put the quantities of everything that I put into this in the description and I'll put how much protein and fat it has as well. And it will be about 80 to 90 grams of carbohydrates. I'll put another example in the description as well if you're not keen on oats and just want a reference. Thirdly, don't eat too close to the race. Aiming for three to four hours before you race is the ideal target. The closer you get to the race, the less beneficial it will be. And in some cases, it will even be detrimental. If you're really struggling for time or getting up early just isn't an option, then just go for a small portion or you could go for a glucose fructose drink combination. If you've watched my other videos, then you'll know there's fat and protein to consider as well. Most likely, this will naturally be part of your pre-race meal anyway, because loads of foods contain fat and protein. Protein is good because it does help us to feel full, but we don't really use it for energy, so it's not important to get loads of protein in before your race. In moderation, fat is just generally good for us, and the sources of it are usually pretty tasty. But you don't need to go crazy on it or worry about your fat stores running out because they won't. Now both fat and protein can be harder and take longer to digest. So don't go for a crazy high protein or fat meal before you race. And another tip here is that if you are having something like cereal or oats, you could go for low fat milk or an alternative source such as oat milk because these contain less protein and fat. So you reduce your risk of having tummy upset from it. To sum it up, we want to go for an average size meal with a priority on carbohydrates. And whatever else you put in it is really up to you. If it's carby, you enjoy it and you know it works well for you, then go for it. If you commonly get tummy upset, cramps or similar during a race, then have a think if there's something that might be causing it. So that might be that you've eaten way too much or too close to a race, or it might be really high in fat or protein and your body just isn't able to digest it. If you can't work it out, then just leave me a comment and I'll try and give you some guidance. If you found this useful and you've got any races coming up or you've just had one, then let me know. I've got one coming up in a couple of weeks and I am super excited to get my suit back on and race. If you haven't already, give the video a like and press subscribe so that you can stay up to date with everything that I release. And have fun racing. See ya.